So, this is a story I've seen a bunch of people talking about throughout the weekend, and I just, I had <laughs> to comment on it. Back on Friday over at gaming news site VG247, we got this little gem. Game developers, it's time to stop listening to the fans. Writer Kirk McKeat is the wise sage behind this revelation. None of you know what you're talking about. Uh, he actually starts with that whole, you know, you don't make video games, so why should you have a say in how they're made? You know the deal, if you don't make movies, you can't talk about how good or bad a movie is. If you go out to dinner and didn't like the meal, it doesn't matter, because you're not a chef. But this thing gets really good when he gets into examples of how you toxic gamers have uh, affected games for the worse. Leading with Mass Effect 3's ending, of all things. Uh, he states that this is actually ground zero for the toxic fan entitlement because of the way they changed the ending. Uh, specifically, uh, because I don't want to misquote these people. Bioware, quote, changed the ending of its game due to negative feedback, bending its creative vision to pander to the baying masses. Yes, that uh, creative vision that just clearly had so much time and effort put into it. Now, maybe Kirk, let, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he didn't play the Mass Effect games. I mean, he is a games journalist, so, you know, we can't really assume he's played anything. But for those of you who haven't, uh, to catch you up, the original Mass Effect trilogy was heavily marketed on the player making choices throughout the series that would impact future events, not just isolated to uh, the individual entries, whichever game they were currently playing, uh, but your save carried over from one game to the next, and the choices you made previously in past games would influence the next, all the way up to this dramatic conclusion, where it was marketed that there would be a robust amount of endings and all sorts of choices you made throughout the trilogy would factor into the ending you received. In an interview with Game Informer about Mass Effect 3, the game's director said, it's not even in any way like the traditional game endings, where you can say how many endings there are, or whether you got ending A, B, or C. It's more like there are some really obvious things that are different, and then lots of smaller things, lots of things about who lives and who dies, civilizations that rose and fell all the way down to individual characters. That becomes the state of where you left your galaxy. The endings have a lot more sophistication and variety in them. It would be interesting to see if somebody could put together a chart for that. Oh, but don't worry, we didn't need a chart. Because it was an A, B, or C ending. Literally, exactly what he said it wouldn't be is what it was. And your choices didn't even factor in to the A, B, or C ending. Everyone was presented at the end with each of the three choices. Players were told that all these decisions were going to matter, so I don't think it was too much to expect that all your decisions would matter. And for that reason, yes, the ending sucked. It deserved to get criticized, to get crucified, honestly, it deserved it. But the real issue behind it was this almost false advertising about how the series was going to wrap up. Countless games have had terrible endings, but Mass Effect 3's is always going to be so notable because players were told that all these things were building to this big epic finale, and they got nothing. And like all these hack journalists, this Kirk guy is trying to omit and misrepresent what was actually going on uh, to push this weird narrative that gamers, the consumers, the people who actually buy the games, let's make that clear, are the problem with the industry. But yeah, if you're so concerned with these awful gamers, uh, you know, of course, not the respectable journalists like yourself, uh, maybe you should go after Kotaku. Maybe they have a bit of an infection because that site published a piece at the time titled Mass Effect 3's ending disrespects its most invested players. Go figure, me agreeing with a Kotaku article. But it's true, so maybe you should go ahead and take a look at that. I think you'll find it to be a very toxic read. Then he moves on to say, uh, quote, You often see video game fans come to the defense of game developers if certain story beats in a game are criticized. You were bad when you were the one criticizing the game, uh, but you're also bad when you're the one defending devs against criticism. 
Uh, criticism, he goes on to say, is just that, pointing out that something could be better. It's not asking for something to be changed. Oh, give me a break. Like, these journalists aren't constantly, heavily pressuring game devs to bend to their wacky wills. Uh, he even says here, oh, the players will cry censorship. Uh, if nothing is being changed, you're saying here, oh, criticism is just pointing out things that could be better. If your influence isn't changing things, why would people be crying about censorship if you're not changing anything? No, what he's actually saying is his criticism good, your criticism, if you don't agree with him, bad. He goes even further to say, uh, it's not even just your voices that are the problem. When these companies encourage you, that is also very problematic. He cites PlayStation's For the Players slogan. Uh, Phil Spencer's claims that the gaming community is a force in the world. Again, like I stated earlier, this is just recognizing that it is the players, the people spending the money that power this industry. Without them, there is no video games. Uh, these devs don't have a job. Phil Spencer doesn't even have his job. There'd be no head of Xbox because there'd be no Xbox. And you, most certainly, would not have a job as a games journalist covering an industry that doesn't exist. So yeah, it should be all about the players. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry journalists who get sent free review copies of these games and get paid to play said games. It's not about you. It's about the people spending money. Yeah, I mean, this thing is just full of contradictions and omittances, doesn't really back up any of the claims. Uh, you know, he talks about Metal Gear Solid calling 4 the worst in the series. I hope you're at least only including the mainline games in that claim. But he believes the reason was uh, because it brought back Solid Snake as a result of people not liking Raiden in Metal Gear Solid 2. And I guess that made Metal Gear Solid 4 a bad game because that's all he says. His problem was that they brought back Solid Snake. And I, I don't know, it's funny he doesn't mention, like, Big Boss in Metal Gear Solid 3, which I'd say is better than both those games, and how Big Boss looks and sounds identical to Solid Snake. I'm sure that decision had nothing to do with fan service. He defends Mass Effect Andromeda. This is a great one. Oh, they were working with a new engine, as if that's an excuse to deliver a completely garbage and broken product. Again, the bugs, the faulty animations and that didn't bother him apparently, so you're wrong for criticizing that mess. But not only that, he takes this one a step further. No joke here, your criticism <laughs> of Mass Effect Andromeda is what caused them to release their most recent disaster, Anthem. He claims you made them too worried about the look and the animations and that in the game that they just, they couldn't make a good game. We live in a world where opinions like this exist and the people who have them get mad when they're not taken seriously. He tries to save himself a bit towards the end with the, you know, oh, all I'm saying is you can't please everyone. No, what you're saying is please me and the people who think like me and ignore everyone else. You have nothing else to say here. He drops this damn uh, Henry Ford quote, right? Uh, towards the very end about creating the automobile where, you know, Ford said something like, if I asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. They wouldn't have asked for like cars. This whole, you know, people don't know what they want, which actually, you know, that echoes the video I did about the IGN staffers saying people who wanted the WoW Classic servers didn't know what they wanted even though thousands of people had been playing on private classic servers until, oh, what made people stop playing those? Oh yeah, uh, Blizzard hitting them with the cease and desist. Yeah, those dumb gamers, they, they just, they definitely, they don't know what they want. He worries, or at least he claims that he worries, uh, that all this gamer feedback is keeping AAA games from reaching their full potential. Again, these examples he cited though, like, what are you even saying? M Mass Effect Andromeda is the automobile? Uh, players are just too dumb to wrap their heads around its sheer greatness? Please, I implore you, anyone who thinks that Mass Effect Andromeda was this big breakthrough that shook up the gaming industry, please tell me in the comments why, because I just don't see it. As with many of these awful, game journalist takes. My views just, they haven't changed. These people see the writing on the wall. Their jobs are becoming less and less necessary, definitely 
less relevant when it comes to things like news delivery because, you know, we have live streaming where developers across the world are increasingly communicating with their players in real time. We've got stuff like the directs, which everyone seems to be copying now, where a company can deliver a concise news briefing directly to you, the consumer. And social media sites like Twitter allow for this live engagement where they can see not just what players say they want, which is again, the narrative being pushed in this article that gamers are just saying we want this and every time the developers are just bending. What devs get to see is responses to different elements of the game, either during development or after its release. And it's not just all about giving people what they want, but seeing how they're reacting to different things, what feedback they give, and then making decisions based on that feedback that you're getting, again, from a wide variety of players. The problem people like Kirk here have is they're increasingly, like I said, losing their influence on these developments. Before all this, the live streaming Twitter, much of the messaging between players and developers, uh, creator and consumer, was filtered through the game's media. And unfortunately for them, that's just not the case anymore. And it's never gonna be something we go back to. So my suggestion is if you want to hang on to the influence that you have left, maybe you should start by stopping this assault on fans. I just, I, I don't get it. And with that, this video's a wrap. Let me know your thoughts on this theory in the comments. Is the problem with the gaming industry too much input from the paying customers? Should developers stop listening to players and solely focus on adhering to the wills of the all-knowing game journalists? Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this discussion of uh, you, the entitled gamers, ruining the video game industry. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. And if you want to keep the conversation going, hit me up on Twitter, at Johnny Zakari. Enjoy my Discord, Shy Guy and Friends. Link to both in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching.